be uh, recorded uh, and Kim will send out the link to where her uh, you can find this video afterwards. Uh, you will also receive a survey later on. Um, just a few short questions. If you've been on here before, you know what those questions are like, and we do appreciate your feedback on that. Uh, so today um, we are going to be covering growing 10 outstanding herbs. We have uh, the fine Miss Kim Perry, who is our a &R agent with Prairie View a and uh, Next week, we will have Youth Gardening Getting Started by uh, Brandy Keller. And our schedule for July is out. The one change for July is we're, we are going to, we're still on Thursdays, but we are going to go back to 10 a.m. Uh, and you can see the topics there. Uh, identifying beneficial insects, home lawn maintenance, fall vegetable gardening preparation, offbeat garden eats. And since we have five weeks in July, uh, we are also going to cover ornamental grasses for the landscape. So uh, with that being said, I am going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to turn it over to Kim Perry uh, and Kim, it is all yours. OK, let me go ahead and start set that up for us. OK, can you see my screen? I can see it and you are coming through loud and clear. Thanks, Kim. Oh. Okay, very good. Well, thank you everybody for joining us uh, Thursday, six o'clock. And I really appreciate it. The whole team appreciates it because if you're like me, you have a little bit of screen fatigue. <laughs> so I really appreciate you all uh, tuning in. So for everyone who's tuning in on time today, I have something special to tell you. Hopefully this will be information that you didn't know. And if not, it's information that somebody didn't know. So Turk's cap, when you think of the Turk's cap plant, um, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. We use it to attract, people think about it, uh, they use it to attract bees and butterflies, uh, hummingbirds, things of that nature. But did you know that the flowers are also edible? The flowers, um, the fruit, uh, which is the, the little seeds, as well as the greenery on that Turk's cap plant is edible. And the flowers actually kind of have a flavor uh, like maybe apple or watermelon. So the next time you're out in the garden, give your, your Turk's cap uh, flowers a try. All right. It's um... OK. OK, guys, so just a few housekeeping rules. I am going to ask everyone to be sure to mute your microphone. Uh, if you have any questions, um, just type them in the question box and my host, uh, either Brandy or Paul, will kind of interrupt throughout the presentation and kind of uh, ask those questions. So again, my name is Kim Perry. Uh, like Paul said, I am the agriculture agent for Prairie View a and University here in Harris County. And this is our um, third lecture for the month of June. Next, next Thursday at six o'clock, Brandy will be talking about youth gardens. All right, so without further ado, what is an herb? An herb means a habitual plant. Any plant with leaves, seeds, or flowers used in medicines, aromas, or in with, within recipes. Herbs are leafy greens, flowering plant parts, seeds, bark, roots, bulbs, or stems. Mmm, bark, cinnamon bark. Can't grow that here. All right, so talk herby to me. These are uh, the few of the plants that we're going to be covering today. So I wrote sorrel because often in Jamaica, they call it sorrel. It's the hibiscus, it's the hibiscus tea that we're used to. It's something that you plant right now for the fall. Okay, we're gonna talk about moringa, rosemary, ginger, Mexican mint marigold, cilantro, chamomile, turmeric, lemon balm, and garlic. All right. So a few plant facts. So something we probably sh each need to know 
which is the difference between a perennial and an annual. It took me a while to <laughs> actually admit that I didn't know the differences when I was out looking at plants, but a perennial is a plant that typically lives longer than two years. I think of an annual as something I have to plant annually. So an annual is a plant that completes its life cycle within a year, okay? Deciduous plant is a plant that typically sheds its leaves. And evergreen is a plant that has leaves throughout the year that are always green. Here in Houston, we're in planting zone nine with an average growing season of 300 days. So a few important facts, health benefits, herbs are commonly used in cooking, preparing teas and beverages, and they allow you to create a relaxed environment. Some herbs repel pests, insects. Um, some people grow herbs to make additional profit, okay, from the seeds, for seeds or the leaves, either one. Uh, herbs are good for attracting pollinators to strengthen certain crops, things like African blue basil. That's an excellent herb that attracts lots of bees for the garden. All right, so let's get started. What is sorrel? Sorrel is an annual plant. It's a member of the Malvasia family, which is the same as okra and cotton. It has over 300 species, guys, 300 different species. So it's commonly referred to as hibiscus, Jamaican sorrel, or roselle. The thing about this plant that I love so much is not only is it beautiful, but when you uh, clip the flowers, you can boil them down and it makes this thick pectin, uh, and you're boiling it with the seeds and you can use that for jelly jams and jelly sorrel is an annual shrub that's planted in the summer harvested in the fall the plant can grow either really bushy or eight feet tall it's not very picky when it comes to soil remember it's part of the the okra family it's a tough plant the plant has reddish stems with green leaves red to yellow flowers and it produces seed seed pods that are enclosed in this red calyx which is widely known to make drinks drinks teas and other food products so this is what it looks like fresh and dried um on the right hand side you can kind of see it dried and that stores well for up to a year on the left hand side that's fresh and again, the right hand side, that's all the, the pedals have been removed from that. So it's good for boiling down to make a drink or a tea. On the left hand side, you can boil that whole flour down and make that gem or jelly. So the current research, existing research so sorrel can help to reduce high cholesterol high blood pressure, it improves the functioning of the liver. The red calyxes are rich, uh, they're a rich resource of antioxidants. And that's kind of what the plant looks like when it grows bushy, not tall. Okay, the seeds have high levels of protein and can relieve coughs, boils, abscesses. It's also used as a diuretic it reduces excess fluids in the body, can serve as a tonic to reduce body weakness. They say it's good for high blood pressure as well. It can be used as a laxative if taken daily and can help in weight loss. I should mention before trying any of these herbs, talk with your physician first. <laughs> okay, disclaimer out there. Um, Again, research indicates that sorrel can be used to treat all different types of things, including certain types of cancer. Next up, one of my favorite, Moringa. I love Moringa. It's so easy to grow. It's not picky. 
Um, it does well in a potted plant. Uh, I usually take the seeds and I'll soak them overnight in some type of distilled water. You don't have to use distilled water, but I do. And then I plant, go ahead and plant it in a pot. It will overwinter in a mild winter for us here in Houston. Um, if you just take a look at all the health benefits that Moringa can provide. I'm not going to go through all of them, but it is really a powerhouse of nutrients um, within that Moringa there. And again, it will overwinter nicely. If you bring it inside during the winter, take it back outside during the summer. All right, so common names for Moringa. Drumstick tree, uh, horseradish, benzo tree, um, and just moringa. So it's native to South Asia. It's drought resistant, fast growing. It's a subtropical, one of the most commonly harvested plants uh, out there. And this plant can reach up to a height of 32 to 40 feet tall. Can you believe that? I mean, in my pot in the backyard, it's already about 12 feet tall, so I can absolutely believe it. So some of the parts you can use are leaves, bark, fruit, flower, roots, and seed pods. Moringa's help, it, uh, it's been proven to help with asthma, heart disease, diabetic. It's a good antioxidant. It protects against infections, respiratory disease, and helps with the digestion tract. So from the bottom there, the little um, next to the little asterisk, I was surprised to see this when I was researching Moringa, but a 2017 study published in the Asian Pacific Journal of Cancer Prevention found that the extract from Moringa leaves act as an anti-cancer agent, okay? that actually reduced cancer cell growth and promote and promoted cell death and cancer cell death and in some of their studies. So you can see on the, the right hand side, that's what the, the plant looks like, the leaves anyway. Um, in the landscape, the tree can reach about 35 feet tall uh, the 40 feet, typically it doesn't get that big in the wild. It can reach up to that 40 feet height that we talked about. And this is just a little bit more about this plant. So it's excellent vitamin and vitamin A, C, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory as well. You can use it in smoothies, salads, teas, soups, and stews. Okay, and this is just a little bit more in Moringa. I told you all that it's my favorite plant. It truly is. So look at all those vitamins and nutrients. All right, so let's talk turmeric. Turmeric is also one of those plants that we can grow here. Um, I've actually just, and I mean, it's, it's a toss up whenever you're buying stuff from the grocery store and planting it because sometimes those rhizomes have been treated where it doesn't actually grow for you. Sometimes it will, but I've actually purchased turmeric, planted it, and it's come true to form. Uh, other times you wanna make sure to order it from a reputable resource, see catalog or something of that nature. So turmeric, is a perennial with specialized roots. And it's actually the rhizomes that you use for turmeric and for ginger. We call it the bulb, but when you're growing for all those herb growers, you know that when you plant this, uh, this herb, it actually creates its own little root system. The roots on the bottom are different from the rhizome, the bulb that you use, and everything for this is edible as well. So you can use it in the landscape. It's a really attractive 
thick bushy plant so it's good for urban gardens um, has excellent culinary use a lot of health benefits people typically use it in curries chilies stews it's a good anti-inflammatory excellent antioxidant lowering cholesterol okay historically it's been used to treat liver and gall gallbladder disorders and we can grow that here in Houston, Texas, which makes me extremely happy. Okay, guys, up next, ginger. So ginger is a tender perennial with specialized roots. And it enjoys partial shade, especially during the summer. And I should make mention that the turmeric as well as ginger, they don't like too much water you can actually rot out the, the rhizomes for that and destroy what you're actually trying to harvest from these plants. So don't do that, don't do that. Just regular watering. It actually prefers a little bit less water than more water. It'll survive better with less water. It can grow to be six feet tall. Uh, the leaves will die back in the winter if you reach about uh, what I read, it says 20 degrees, but actually, I would say not even 20 degrees. If it gets like 32, the leaves are dying back. So it's a heavy feeder, requires rich, uh, rich, rich soil, regular composting. The flowers for the ginger are edible. I should make mention. So ginger provides a very warming tea. It can be eaten raw, although it's super spicy. It stores well. So if you get this type, we were growing it, uh, we were selling it uh, at the Master Gardener plant sale a couple years ago. It was baby ginger, which peeled really easy. It wasn't really fibrous because ginger can become really fibrous. Um, you can use it in the landscape as well. Uh, it's good for containers, just like turmeric. It's good for making ginger beer, ginger tea. Uh, it's good for the common cold, flu symptoms. Excellent antioxidant. Helps with nausea and blood circulation. And uh, yeah, so that's it, ginger. All Kim, right, huh? Kim, there's a question uh, back on Moringa. Where do where can they get the seeds? Okay, so you can look pretty much any reputable seed company online. Uh, we'll have that Moringa for you. The seeds do, if you're growing it from seed, it does take a little bit. So just follow the, the directions on the back of the seed packet. But again, you can pretty much grow that any time of the year because you can grow that indoors as well if you're starting it right now. But typically you would start it in the spring. All right, so on to rosemary. Now, the thing about rosemary is it's a tough, hardy perennial. I mean, it does really well here. It does not grow well from seed. The flowers are edible for rosemary. Uh, it makes a good indoor container gardening plant. It flowers, the flowers can be blue, white, or pink. It's nothing really special <laughs> when it flowers, but it just has something magnetic about it. If you, you walk past rosemary, you just have to touch it. It's one of those plants that you touch it and you know you smell your hands or you break a little piece of it. So it attracts bees. The oil is used in teas and medicine. It's a, they say it's a good insect repellent. Um, I don't know what kind of insects. I have it planted near my door and it has not uh, <laughs> uh, deterred any of my mosquitoes but hey maybe for somebody else it'll really detract insects 
<laughs> All right, so it treats issues such as coughs, headaches, and nausea. And I should say for, go back to Rosemary, it is a, uh, it's a perennial, so it does last pretty much all year long and again it's tough it can it'll forgive you if you forget to water it it'll spring right back for you all right so mexican mint marigold in texas we call this our texas tarragon it's native to mexico and central america um it's good for outdoor container gardens it gets to be about two to three feet um, tall, two, I, I would say about two feet tall, about three feet wide, yellow blossoms all season long. It does die back, but it comes right back in the spring. I've purchased one Mexican marigold plant and it just kept coming back year after year after year. And it's actually quite beautiful. Um, I don't know about the, the Texas tarragon. I, I don't get that when I taste it, but it does make a very nice tea. So it's used in baked chicken, hot cocoa, and um, it makes a soothing drink uh, cold as well. So pour the boiling water over it and then stick it in the refrigerator. All right. So lemon balm, lemon balm is, uh, can be invasive, kind of like mint. It, in fact, it is from the mint family. So yeah, <laughs> no wonder it can become invasive. I love lemon balm. Lemon balm, if you let it go to flower, to seed, you will have lemon balm all over your yard but it is a, another one of those very tough perennials. Um, it prefers morning sun and afternoon shade. It has this wonderful lemon scented bushy herb that does well in containers. It prefers loose, well-drained soil. The thing about lemon balm is if you over fertilize it, then you'll get these big beautiful leaves but the leaves won't have very much scent so i don't fertilize mine a lot um lemon balm can treat you bad sometimes and get aphids it can get white fly uh things of that nature and with your herbs you have to be very careful what you spray or treat it with because you are ingesting the the leaves a lot of the time so lemon balm may it's a it's again it's great for teas it's excellent in oils vinegars salads and desserts as are a lot of the herbs that we talked about uh, it contains a lot of vitamin c it's good for digestion nausea headaches and depression All right, one of my favorites, again, well, all of these are my favorites. That's why I chose these herbs. And they're easy, guys, to grow for the most part. I didn't want to steer you wrong with herbs that are difficult to grow. But I didn't put a lot of common herbs in there, such as basil. So these are things, hopefully, that you'll want to try. So this is chamomile. And chamomile, you want to grow in the winter. And the reason grows best in the winter. But the reason why I added it is because you want to get your seed packets now so you can have this plant for the winter. When you think of chamomile, everybody thinks of the wonderful chamomile tea, um, often referred to as ground apple. It is an annual, but it acts like a perennial because it does reseed itself and it comes back. It doesn't necessarily come back in that same spot. It may come back in a different spot in your, your yard, but you can always replant that. So if you see it coming up somewhere it's not supposed to be, just scoop that up, stick it in a pot, or put it where you would like for that plant to grow. So there are many different types of chamomile. 
Uh, the two most popular are German chamomile, okay, and Roman chamomile. So for us here in Houston, I would highly recommend the German chamomile. It's a little bit easier for us to grow than the, the Roman chamomile. It's a, a perennial. It reaches about 12 inches in height. Uh, and of course, it reseeds itself. Um, it easily handles our winters. No problems. Uh, the problem is, again, our summers. It starts to die back in the spring. So that's my spindly little plant when it's getting ready to that. That was the end of its season. Uh, the summer's coming up. So chamomile is one of the most valued and loved teas in the world, actually, not just the United States. It can be dried and stored with ease. It helps to promote uh, insomnia. It treats uh, different things uh, like colds. It helps boost immunity. It reduces pain spasms and period pains. It soothes stomach aches, treats cuts, wounds, skin conditions, and reduces stress. I have a coworker, Brandy, who drinks a lot of chamomile tea. All right, so cilantro. Cilantro is an awesome plant. And again, this is one of those plants that, I mean, it takes little or nothing to grow. You just drop those seeds in the ground and they start to come up. The problem is when you let cilantro go to seed. Um, once upon a time when my daughter was much younger, I told her to, to cut the, the seed pods from the cilantro after it dried. She snatched the whole plant down and we had cilantro that grew in our yard for years through through grew through up the grass <laughs> throughout the grass all right so cilantro is an annual that enjoys cold climate and partial shade it's used in foods such as salsa and teas it's an essential oil it's also called coriander and the thing about this plant is right before it gets ready to go to seed if you clip the seeds when they're green, they have a almost like a bright springy taste. It's a different flavor than when you let them turn brown. When you let them turn brown, it has more of an, an, an earthy flavor. Uh, it's good for, say, uh, corned beef and potatoes, uh, carrots during the winter. So all parts of the plants are edible, but the leaves and the seeds are more commonly used, also known as coriander. So you get two for one with cilantro. All right, so we're nearing the end here, guys, but I could not let this, I, I, I was torn between which herbs to present on. Since it was only 10, I had to call my list down to 10 when I had about 20 and about 30 minutes. <laughs> so, but I couldn't, couldn't get out of here without talking about garlic. Yes, we can grow garlic. Garlic requires a well-drained soil. When you have fresh garlic from the garden, you will not want any other type of garlic ever again. The flavor is just that amazing. I mean, it's like nothing I've ever tried, but garlic is going to make you suffer because it takes about a year to grow. So you're gonna wanna start ordering your garden. You're gonna, you're gonna look at what gar garlic to order now. For Houston, Texas, we need soft neck garlic, not hard neck garlic, because hard neck garlic typically requires longer chill hours than soft neck. And for that garlic, um, you need a well-drained soil because if it gets too wet, it's going to rot out your bulbs. So you plant it in the winter around about November, December, and you'll be harvesting it in the summer. 
So we all know that garlic is a powerhouse of nutrients and it dates back a thousand years, uh, easily a thousand years ago and was consumed by the Egyptians. Uh, it's native to Central Asia and Northeast Iran. It's a perennial with a compound bungle, bundle of bulbs, most widely used in herbs in the United States. Of course, it typically grows well in drained sandy loam soil. Uh, we mentioned the difference between the hard neck and the soft neck. The hard neck, again, flowers. I should mention the soft neck garlic does not flower. Um, what parts of garlic are edible? The flowers, the leaves, the roots, and the bulbs. So garlic is proven to help with cholesterol, blood pressure. It's an antibacterial, helps with infections, free radicals. Again, you can preserve garlic, um, harvest it. You can dry it, um, stick it in jars. You can do all sorts of things with garlic. It's just a, a wonderful, wonderful herb that, yes, we can grow in Houston, Texas. All right, so uh, a couple, couple facts. So here's one way to consume herbs. When the leaves are saturated with hot water, the little oil molecules that are trapped uh, on the leaves those those typically that's where you find the the oils from that plant and when you pour the hot wa water over it those um, flavor i call it i like to call them flavor bubbles they burst and the flavor is released okay some evaporate directly over the water and that would and that's actually what creates that exotic aroma so if you were to go out in your yard and say harvest rosemary and pour, pour boiling water over that as those little flavor bubbles are bursting, you smell that wonderful flavor. And the same happens when you walk past and uh, rub those plants. All right, so here's a closer look. So you can see here the little blue, uh, molecules those are actual the the little oils and that's on the leaf so itsy bitsy tiny molecules all right so any questions for me brian um hold on one second i'm gonna mute someone sure okay all right now i'm gonna go back um let's see where is your favorite place to purchase ginger and turmeric roots to plant um my favorite place is all right i'm going to be biased here uh because i'm a master gardener but we have some really good plants <laughs> so some of the plants i've purchased uh are from local uh local places such as Buchanan's, Wabash, uh, some of the places, but the best ones I've purchased are from the Master Gardener sales. Um, or just ask a friend as well. Uh, say, hey, can you, can you spare some, some garlic or, I mean, not garlic, can you spare some ginger or turmeric? And if I'm your friend, I'll say, yeah, come on over. I'll put it in a pot. Wear your mask. I'll set it on the porch. <laughs> All right. Well, you opened up this question by this picture. <laughs> so now you have to address, can we grow lavender in Houston? <laughs> well, <laughs> sometimes. You, you, you can grow. I've seen it grow, but I've, I've grown it before. But let me tell you, I only grow it to watch it die. So it dies very slowly, <laughs> but yeah, it's growing before it actually dies. But lavender typically likes a lot of cold, uh, a lot more cold than we can give it. Um, when I go back home to Colorado, I see lavender often growing there with no problem. So it likes the cold, dry climate as opposed to our humidity and wet. 
Okay. Um, where can I find Roselle in the Houston area? Um, so you can find that uh, probably any of the big box stores have those seed packets. And I don't know if you've seen, I'll, I'll go back through it so you can actually get the correct scientific genus. Um, since there's so many different types, I want to say when I was researching, there were like mm, 500 different types. That is the correct genus that you want to grow uh, the edible type that I'm talking about. Okay. Um, are you waiting for another question? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, someone had mentioned Arbor Gate, so we can just throw that in with the list that you gave uh, for oh, finding. Sure. Things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forgot about them. So another lavender. How long does lavender take to sprout? Having a hard time from seeds. Um, I would not grow lavender from seed. Just rule of thumb, guys, the smaller the seeds are, the more difficult it is for that plant to germinate. You also need to be really sensitive towards um, the expiration of seeds. Um, some companies, they'll put the germination rate, depending upon how old the seed packet is. Uh, some companies, I've just straight up asked before I order the seeds because the older the seeds are, the less likely they are, uh, the, the germination rate declines. So, but but any of the the places, uh, Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds or Tutorial ter Seeds, Southern Seeds, all different places will sell that. All right, this is an interesting question. Have you ever grown some of these plants in the woods? I have an apartment, but have tons of woods to try a garden in. Oh, well, um, uh, I have not. I mean, um, I'm from Colorado. We drove past the mountains and woods, but never have, uh, and even Texas. I know some herbs do do really well in the woods. I've seen some stuff grow wild. Um, let's take a look. I can imagine, let's see. I know turmeric, not ginger. I can imagine rosemary probably would and some of the things in the mint family might treat you well in the woods. All right. OK, do you mind sharing a little about how to grow basil and parsley? You can't get out of it. <laughs> All right, so basil is pretty easy to grow for the most part. There are many, many different types of basil. It just depends on what you're trying to get out of that basil plant. Um, if you're trying for, say, example, the box, I think it's boxwood basil, that is uh, more of a compact uh, type of basil. Um, for basil, it also has a lot of nutritional value. The, diff the deal is with basil, when you're cooking with it, the longer you let it cook, uh, when you're harvesting fresh basil, when you put it in, say, spaghettis or, or soups or stews, you'll get the most flavor when it's fresh and you just put it in right at the end. It tends to lose a little bit of uh, the flavor when you let it cook longer. Um, basil also likes a, a, a well-drained soil, um, nutrient-rich um, soil. Um, when you see it beginning to uh, flower, I like to pinch off the flowers because that can change the flavor as well of the leaves for that basil plant. Um, I like to grow the heirloom varieties when you can and the heirloom varieties, which are a lot of herbs, are heirlooms. Um, 
you can hold those seeds, continue to regrow that basil plant um, season after season, but there's so many different types that you, you might not, you might want to try a different one, Thai basil or um, what's another basil? Um, all kinds of Genevieve. basil. Genevieve. Genevieve. Sweet, sweet basil. Ruff, uh, ruffled basil, purple basil, uh, all sorts of basil. And what was the other herb brand? Um, oh, parsley. Parsley. Okay. So for us, um, I like to, parsley, of course, you grow in the winter. Basil, you grow uh, right now, the spring, summer. Parsley does better in cold crops. Um, I have, I, I'll, I'll admit, I have not grown parsley, uh, but parsley is, is um, I've seen it grow, from what I've seen, it grows in a well-drained soil, well-drained, uh, nutrient-rich soil, um, and that that's about what I know about parsley and the way that it grows. I know it does well in containers, uh, I believe parsley grows well from seed, if I can remember correctly. But yeah, you'll have to double check that as well. All right. Um, the questions keep coming, but I'm just going to pick a couple more. Um, okay. There was one of them that I, it was about ginger. Uh, how do you harvest the bulb for ginger to use for cooking? And is it okay to freeze uh, the peeled ginger? Okay, so, I mean, it's a personal preference. I don't like to freeze my ginger because it, it crystallizes and then when you pull it back out, it's almost, uh, it loses some of its flavor. I find that if you can dehydrate it, then it holds a lot more of the flavor when you go to put it in soups and stews and teas. Um, things of that nature. Uh, what was the, the rest of the question, Brandy? Um, it was Harvesting. the first part. Harvest it, okay. Oh, so, harvesting. yes, so you just kind of go in there and you cut a little part of that plant uh, and you're cutting the ribosomes again. You don't want to cut it all. You do not want to dig it all up and that will replace itself it takes a while so you know it, it takes a, at least a good season to get up and start it before you get this big bushy plant and again it requires a lot of nutrients um, once you do that you could probably have it forever I've had my ginger for about five years now granted I've it, it's taken me some learning curves but it's it's still alive and it's still producing. <laughs> All right, and I'm going to make one comment uh, that's on here about uh, the master gardeners, and then I'll ask you one last question. Sure. Uh, so it was clarified that Genoa Friendship Garden, the uh, satellite garden that the master gardeners have off of Genoa Red Bluff Road, they have some moringa plants for sale behind the greenhouse. Uh, they're generally there Monday and Wednesday mornings. Or, uh, they're not generally, they are there Monday and Wednesday mornings. And uh, right now, you know, with social distancing, I mean, because it's outdoors, it's it's pretty, it's pretty good. Um, so just to mention that, I am going to just have you end on cilantro because I can grow about any plant. And I, like this uh, person who asked a question, keeps killing theirs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the one question was, how do you pick the cilantro leaves? Um, and uh, and I guess just in, in general, uh, do you know if it's real sensitive to being over water? I've tried about everything. I just, I've just chalked it up that I can't do it. <laughs> well, I think the difference is, is because you might be giving the plant a little too much love. It is, <laughs> it's a plant that you can really neglect. Um, I would say 
with with any of my plants when I'm starting them again, I try to get the freshest, uh, the newest pack of seeds that I can. The the seeds for the cilantro are pretty big, so if you can imagine the the turmeric and not the turmeric seeds, the coriander seeds, those are pretty big guys. So if I were gonna start and I really wanted that plant, go ahead and get yourself some potting soil. Uh, make sure it drains really well. Uh, get yourself a pot. I would probably start it in partial sun, partial shade, and sprinkle those seeds on and just kind of water it until the plant comes up. And you should find it there. Um, I want to end on if you guys find me on Facebook, you should see me. It's Kim Kimberly Perry. Uh, I have on a white shirt and I will be posting a ginger recipe. It's for my favorite ginger cookie and it takes three different types of ginger, but everywhere I've taken these cookies, people are always asking me for the recipe and they absolutely love the cookies. So the, the farmers are even asking, will you share that recipe or will you bring those cookies again? So I'm going to share that recipe a little later this evening. So just go ahead and send me a, a friend request and the recipe is yours. Um, if you have any questions, there's my email address below. It's Kimberly.Perry at ag.tamu.edu and you can send me a private question about herbs and hopefully I can answer it. If not, I will find someone who can. Hey, and Kim, Kim, I posted uh, your Facebook uh, profile. Oh, link. thank you. Hey, Kim, uh, we had uh, we have someone that's had their hand up in the uh, the list here. So, uh, Susan, you have your hand up. Uh, if you want to unmute, unmute your mic and ask your question, go ahead. And if not, okay, I guess not. All right, Kim. All right. Well, you can lead us. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining us. Sorry we went a little over. Um, please join us next Thursday. Brandy will have an excellent presentation. Enjoy your evening. Enjoy your dinner and use some of those herbs. Thanks, Kim. Thank you.